Hey y'all, so this week's video is on how to get good at downhill skateboarding really fast. First set of tips is going to be one or two small things you can do to see immediate improvements. And the other set of things is stuff that's going to be better for the long term that's going to allow you to improve consistently over a longer period and should have a compounding effect, generally speaking. So first up, we're going to be looking at quick fixes to get you guys good really quickly. If you use this, you'll be able to see some immediate sort of improvements. First tip I have for you guys is when you're skating downhill, when you're in your tuck, whatever it is, look straight ahead down the hill as opposed to what's immediately in front of you. A lot of people look at what's immediately in front of them to anticipate rolling over it. And they do this a lot with cracks, with waves in the road, when skating over pebbles, rocks, all that good stuff. And what this does, when you look at something, when you're anticipating it, it makes you rigid and stiff. And when you're rigid and stiff, and when you finally roll over these things, they affect you and unsettle the board more than they should. When you're relaxed and you skate over these things, they don't unsettle the board much. And you're usually able to keep on rolling straight with out really being affected by them too much but by fixating on them they affect you more so what you want to do you want to look straight ahead down the hill and take in the hill as a whole as opposed to what's immediately in front of you this will allow you to skate in a relaxed way and these things won't unsettle you and be able to go faster with ease and if you're skating above 30 miles per hour or even above 20 things like pebbles a crack in the road not gonna affect you it's likely not gonna make you fall 99 percent of the time so yeah to reaffirm look straight ahead down the hill and not what's immediately in front of you don't skate anticipating these things just be relaxed stay in your tuck and you should roll over them with no issue the next tip i have for you guys is that a twitch does not necessarily mean a wobble just because you skate over something and your truck twitches doesn't mean it's going to wobble this twitching is usually just feedback that your truck has rolled over something and that something could be a road imperfection a pebble a crack a bit of roughness whatever but yeah twitching does not equal into a wobble it's just your truck providing feedback when it can turn into a wobble is when you overreact or try to correct it when you try to correct it you give the twitch the input it needs in order for it to turn into a wobble most of the time the best thing to do uh, to a twitch is to just stay relaxed just feel the twitch let your truck do the thing it usually recorrects yourself and you're usually still going straight but if you do try to suddenly stand up out of your tuck or shift your weight in a way to counter the twitch you usually get wobbles and you die but yeah so a twitch does not equal a wobble so if you do get a twitch it's fine just stay relaxed keep your weight where it needs to be and you'll be fine most of the time weight management so we all know as a rule of thumb that you should have more weight on your front foot than your back foot wobbles tend to come from the back truck and by having more weight on your front foot you are able to naturally limit how much input the back truck has so yeah we all know that one another thing we should that should become a rule of thumb is how you shift your weight when you're going fast and how precise and gentle you are with your movements if you shift your weight too quickly or if you move too quickly you can often get speed wobbles a big mistake i see beginners do is standing up too quickly out of the tuck and when you stand up too quickly out of your tuck there's a dramatic change in where your weight is on the board and what this often does it unsettles your board and that often leads to speed wobbles so when you're skating fast you want to be very gentle with your movements and very precise with where you want your feet to go where you want your weight to go so when you come out of tuck gently lay your back foot flat whilst having most of your weight on your front foot and that should really keep the board settled and you shouldn't get speed wobbles so yeah be gentle with your movements and how you manage your weight wow the next step is going to be film yourself if you're not already filming yourself and filming how you do certain things whether it's a corner or a road or whatever you need to do that filming yourself quickly reveals what mistakes you're doing when we're skating we usually have we don't have a third person perspective of what we're doing we imagine we're doing things but in the reality can be very different so film yourself you're able to quickly see any mistakes you're doing and quickly correct them you're also able to see any improvements you're making if you film yourself regularly so yeah film yourself Next tip I have for you guys is get new bushings that are appropriate for your weight and get new pivots for your truck. Bushings that are appropriate for your weight can give you immediate improvements in ride. You're going to have more control over your truck and it's going to be stable enough at speed. New pivots also allow your truck to lean and turn smoother and give you a little bit of extra control. Now getting bushings according to your weight can be a little bit of a complicated process, but if you visit the R slash longboarding 
Reddit group, uh, the Longboard Family page group on Facebook, and the What Gear I Should Buy group on Facebook as well. You can get advice from experienced riders and pros alike. They can give you information on exactly what sort of bushing setup is going to be best for your needs, your requirements, which are going to be your weight, the truck you have, your board setup, all that good stuff. Uh, links to this group in groups in the description. Boom. So the next tip I have for you guys, after buying your new bushings and pivots, or if you haven't already, you're going to want to tighten the back truck a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean about half a rotation of the kingpin nut or a full rotation of the kingpin nut. And what this does, it just gives you a little bit extra stability when you're skating fast without really restricting the truck too much. What it also does that I found is that it gives you a little bit more control when you're sliding. You can put more weight on the back truck. You don't have to further it as much, you know, you don't have to have as much finesse and control and yeah, you're able to learn a little bit quicker. So yeah, tighten your back truck a little bit, but don't over tighten it. If you over tighten it, you're severely limiting the performance of your truck. And yeah, it might be a little bit more stable, but you're getting diminishing returns in terms of performance. So yeah. So now you've got your new bushings, you've tightened your back truck a little bit. You're also going to want to play around with washers a little bit. Washers change how your bushings perform and switching between them can give you the, that little bit of extra restriction you need to get your truck to perform the best or that extra bit of movement you need from your bushings to get your truck to perform appropriately for you. So play around with your washers. Again, you can always ask experienced riders on Facebook, on Reddit, uh, in the groups that I've linked below. You can ask them which washers you should use. <laughs> so the last tip I have for you guys is get quality equipment. By that I mean you want equipment that's appropriate for downhill skateboarding and appropriate for your skill level. And by appropriate for downhill skateboarding I mean a stiff deck trucks around 45 degrees that are high quality and you want a set of free ride wheels especially if you're learning to slide cheap equipment in downhill skateboarding is going to hold back your progression it's not going to turn and lean very smoothly and it's not going to be stable at speed these cheap trucks are often very difficult to control and they're actually very dangerous if you take them to speed you're likely going to wobble and you die so yeah and in downhill skateboarding high quality equipment doesn't have to be super expensive you're looking at about 50 dollars for a set of high quality cast trucks and by high quality trucks i mean badge and six trucks paris v3s caliber 44s arsenal trucks etc and these trucks should allow you to learn how to skate fast pretty safely just remember as well to change out the bushings for those that are appropriate for your weight Finally, you don't want to simply copy paste what the pros ride. Pros often ride setups that are very difficult to slide and require a lot of skill and finesse to make the most out of them. Simply copy pasting these setups often doesn't result in the best experience for beginners. So yeah, just don't copy what the pros ride. But yeah, quality equipment is important in downhill skateboarding and you don't want to have anything that's gonna limit your progression. Quality equipment allows you to learn pretty well and it doesn't significantly steepen your learning curve or whatever. All right, so next up we have the longer term fixes. These are things that you're gonna to have to do for a period of time before you see any real improvement. But if you do keep doing them, they should have a compounding effect and make it make it really easy for you to get good at downhill skateboarding really fast. So yeah, so first thing I wanna talk about is stretching and flexibility. Flexibility is really important in downhill skateboarding and I don't think enough people talk about it. So all the best skaters in the world have insane lower body flexibility and the people who get good really quickly also have really good lower body flexibility. So if you wanna get good fast, you wanna make sure your flexibility is on point. And the best way to do this is stretches. So I recommend you do dynamic stretches before each session and static stretches after each session. And what this does is just gonna ensure that you're, you, if you're not already flexible, that you start to get a lot more flexible and you're able to get into those awkward downhill skateboarding positions, namely the tuck and the heel side slide with ease. Also, it means that you're, it's gonna allow you to recover quicker from sessions and you're gonna start off every session feeling good and feeling confident that you're gonna have a good session basically. But yeah, overall the goal is to make sure that your body is not a limiting factor in your progression. If your body is not flexible, it's basically gonna make your learning curve steeper. So yeah, stretching and flexibility is important.
So the next thing you want to do is find your local downhill skateboarding community. Or if there isn't one, you're going to just have to create one for yourself. And this does a few things. First, it gives you people to skate with, which provides a sense of belonging. And number two, it stokes you. And these two things are gonna get you out of the house to skate time and again. Of course, there are other benefits as well. Like you get to try out other gear, you get in-person advice, get a lowdown on where all the good skate spots are. And finally, it shows you what people can actually do on a downhill skateboard. If there are experienced riders in that group, it really opens your eyes to what is possible on a downhill skateboard. If you're alone, sometimes you don't really know what's possible, but when you can see it in person, it opens up your imagination and your eyes and you can basically see what you can do. It's really important. And if you're looking to get good fast, uh, it's key that you find your local community. As much as it is nice to have a community and other people to skate with, you should also learn to skate alone. More often than not, people aren't always going to be available to skate with you. Or they might be available, but they may not have the desire or the skill necessary to tackle some hills. So you're going to have to go it alone at some point. And yeah, it sucks. But, you know, at the end of the day, skating is an individual journey. And learning to skate alone, learning to enjoy skating on your own is really going to allow you to become a better skater. You're not going to be held back by other people coming to the session or whatever it is. So learn to skate alone. So the next tip I have for you guys is to skate frequently. And by frequently, I mean skate at least three times a week, at least like a two hour session or something like that. And skating three times a week is gonna give you the consistency you need where you can be able to build up on each session. If your skate sessions are too far apart, like once a week, you're always gonna be relearning something at the beginning of, of the session or re-familiarizing yourself with the setup. And this just really slows down your progression. Skating at least three times or at least two times is gonna allow you to build up on the last session's progress and you're gonna see a lot of consistency and improvements in your skating. So yeah, skate frequently enough. So the next point is you're gonna to wanna to find a corner and session it as much as you can. And sessioning a particular corner is going to teach you how to turn through it and how to slide for it and basically everything you need to do to take that corner comfortably. And by sessioning a specific corner, you quickly learn what your weaknesses are and it allows you the opportunity to figure out these weaknesses, improve upon them and just become a better skater overall. It's going to allow you to attack things and work on specific things consistently, which is key if you want to get good quickly. Of course, you are going to want to hit up other roads which is gonna be my next point. But sometimes if you have too much variety and you can't focus on a specific thing, it's very hard to build progress and improve. So yeah, as much as I said, focus on a specific corner, you are gonna to want to mix it up as well and try out other roads. Different roads require that you skate them differently and it's gonna open up your eyes to different things you can do on other different roads as well. And yeah, it's just gonna make you a better skater overall. It's gonna force you to take things and try different things and you're just going to become a better skater so yeah as much as you are focusing on specific spots try new roads and for more experienced riders i advise you to pick a specific roads and just focus getting good on it and figuring out your weaknesses on that road and building up and trying to improve on those weaknesses and it will just make you a better skater overall the next tip i have for you guys is you're going to want to do everything you can to avoid getting hurt. The two ways to do this, first is get protective equipment. Getting injured sucks and protective equipment just allows you to take slams, take falls, which are 100% going to happen and you're just able to walk away from them uninjured. You know, you don't have to wait two weeks because you got really messed up or set the session out. You can just get back up and keep skating. So I recommend a certified helmet, knee pads, and hip pads because you're going to be busting your ass more than you expect and slide gloves as well and yeah the other way is skating within your limits don't overestimate your abilities always take it easy and err on the side of safety so if you show up to a new hill don't go up to the top of the hill and send it as hard as you can take it easy suss out the new hill and yeah skate within your limits don't overestimate your abilities and yeah those two things should really prevent you from getting hurt the next step is going to be attend closed road events or attend free ride events right now because of covid19 there are no free ride events to attend 
but soon once everyone gets vaccinated or whatever they're going to open up but yeah free ride events or closed road events are basically events where they shut the road down for two days or more they line up hay bales on some corners and stuff they put marshals there and they just make the environment as safe as possible to skate and at closed road events you're able to really push your limits and really send it hard without really worrying about getting injured too much if you do fall you're likely gonna slide into hay bales and you're gonna be fine um there are no hazards like oncoming cars that could mess you up and you just generally have more room to experiment and try new things so yeah closed road events attend them skate them get good and yeah right so the next thing you're going to want to learn about is race lines race lines are just the fastest line through a corner and learning about them is going to allow you to take really good lines through a corner it's going to teach you when you should slow down for a corner and it's going to teach you the safest line through a corner and this just allows you to become a better skater and to make better decisions when you're approaching a corner which is really important for open road skating and yeah it's just going to allow you to make better decisions skate safer and you're going to be able to have a better time skating and learn faster as well so yeah learn about race lines right so the next tip is going to be a little bit more challenging and it's going to be more appropriate for slightly more advanced riders so this tip is learn to skate within your lane and by learning to skate within a small sort of space you really learn how to really control your board you really gain another level of finesse it is a considerably more challenging but once you pull it off you're gonna become a much better skater you're gonna be able to take better lines you're gonna really know what your board can do on a hill so yeah learn to skate within your lane and should make you a much better skater right so the last tip i have for you guys is that it's simply gonna take time so learn to embrace the suck you're not going to become a really good downhill skateboarder overnight these things are gonna take time so don't try to rush anything with downhill skateboarding when you try to rush learning things you often get hurt as a result so don't try to rush it don't take any shortcuts just embrace the suck if you're able to still have fun while doing all these things then you're succeeding so yeah try to have fun and finally don't compare yourself to other people if you start skating at the same time with someone else and they get a lot better than you a lot quicker don't worry about it everybody has their own individual journey with downhill skateboarding so don't compare yourself and yeah man just remember to have fun along the way so yeah as much as i have given you guys all these tips there is no magic pill it's still gonna take time um, but you should see some improvements with the tips that i've given you guys and that's the video if you have any other tips you want to share with other people leave a comment below if you disagree with anything that i've said leave a comment below and we can discuss as always there's a more in-depth article and i recommend you check that out big thanks to all my patrons for supporting me i'm able to make videos like this because you all support me basically and thanks for watching this video and you guys take care